I've had quite a few people come into my office noticing that they're having uh, increased issues with insomnia, not eating as well or eating too much, sometimes sleeping too much instead of insomnia. There's difficulty keeping track of their daily activities. I'm not connecting with their family as much even. So I think it's really important to practice good self-care. ADHD Rewired, episode 158. This is the show designed for those of us with really good intentions, but a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and speaker. The website is ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me tell you about this. Come join us for ADHD Rewired's ninth season of online group coaching and accountability. Our spring 2017 sessions are April 24th through June 30th. Go to coachingrewired.com now and schedule your registration interview. Registration is March 27th through April 4th. But if you go now and reserve your spot and you see availability on any Tuesday or Thursday before March 24th, grab it. And if you do, mention the promo code REWIRED100 for $100 off registration. Don't let another season pass you by. If you're ready to grow, then go to coachingrewired.com for more information and to schedule your call. That's coachingrewired.com. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast today. Um, If you are new to the podcast, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And if you have been listening for a while, Welcome back. So last week on the podcast, Nikki Kinzer and Pete Wright from Take Control, the ADHD podcast, agreed to do a 31-day decluttering challenge where for whatever day of the week it is on the calendar, so today it's March 7th, so ideally you would put seven items away or throw them away, recycle, give them away. So the idea is for every day of the week, it is you you declutter that many items. I've already seen a number of people uh, post on Facebook. Facebook and Twitter who are joining us in this challenge. So if you are, if you're on Twitter, you can tweet at myself at Eric Tivers. You can tweet at Nikki and Pete. They're they're on Twitter at Take Control ADHD. Use the hashtag that represents whatever day of the week it is. So today is day seven. So it should be hashtag day seven. Um, so I posted videos on Facebook, on YouTube. You can leave comments there. And I wish you guys the best of luck. I'm really actually excited uh, about about doing this. This episode has some of my personal political views in it, and I typically have shied away from sharing my views because ADHD Rewired really is more than just a podcast. We are a community, and as a community, I want to bring people together so we can learn from each other. But politics affects those of us with disabilities, and while these conversations may be difficult, it is my hope that today's conversation can help us all be better listeners, communicators, and citizens, no matter who you voted for. I hope that you find my approach to this respectful, and if you choose to share your thoughts with me or in the community, I just ask that you do so in a respectful way. And if you're feeling fired up about a particular issue or comment, which even happened to me during the conversation you are about to hear, and I was totally called out on it, do what I was actually told to do by my guest. And that's take a breath and communicate from a place of love and a desire to understand. Because if there's one thing that I know to be true, that there's one human universal desire that we all have as human beings is the desire to be understood. Enjoy this episode. (laughs) Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. Today, we have returning to the podcast, best-selling author of five books on ADHD, blogger, speaker, counselor, and friend, Dr. Stephanie Sarkis. Dr. Sarkis is a licensed mental health counselor, a national certified counselor, and a Florida Supreme Court certified mediator. 
She maintains a private practice in Tampa, Florida, where she specializes in ADHD, autism, and anxiety. Dr. Sarkis is a blogger for Psychology Today and the Huffington Post. And recently, one of her blogs went viral, and she was interviewed, I think it was on CNN. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, German news. <laughs> and, and that. So uh, between <laughs> CNN, German news, and now ADHD Rewired, um, I'm not sure where I fall. Between... I, just, I just keep going higher and higher. What can I say? <laughs> Well, Stephanie, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So um, you're, today's episode, what we're going to do is we are, um, we're going to be, we're going to be juggling a little bit of hot cold today, but I think for a very important reason. Um, your uh, blog post that you wrote um, that went viral was on gaslighting. Right. Okay. So before we sort of explain gaslighting, which we will in just a moment, um, we're going to be talking a little bit about some politics on the show, but not taking views and sides um, per se. Um, what we wanted to really talk about on today's episode is, um, well, I'm going to, I'll start with a story. So um, I'll share my personal um, uh, political persuasion. I mean, I'm a social worker, so things about social justice, um, uh, uh, human rights, rec- uh, uh, advocating for people with disabilities, these tend to be democratic issues. Okay. So for me, that's where I stand. Right. So it's, I not saying that other people are wrong, right. It's, we have different points of view. So as someone who. We, we meaning you and other people in the world. Right. Right. right, right. Not right. like personally. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we can talk about that too, but okay. anyways, so, so just to clarify. Yeah. So we're not, we're not doing political debate today. So when, um, that might be fun though, but, uh, <laughs> so Stephanie and I were, were talking on, on Facebook. Um, uh, I think we were, either you were responding to one of my posts or I was responding to one of your posts. Okay. And then I messaged you and I, I shared with you that I was, you know, since, um, the inauguration, I was, I, I have been struggling personally, um, because I, um, I, I'm a, concerned citizen and the things that I see on on the news are cons- deeply concerning to me okay and I was noticing that it was having an impact on my own mental health um, I was uh, not sleeping well like for a good two weeks my sleep was just really really awful and then so I, I sort of took a step back and I recognized that if I'm going to be an engaged citizen right now I need to prioritize sort of self-care. Um, so I want to sort of put that sort of piece of the story in there because I'm not trying to I'm not trying to remain neutral in, in this. Oh. I think that there are certain uh, issues and things that we all need to be aware of and have a conversation about um, as, as citizens of whether it's this country in the US or if you're listening elsewhere. So part of this is how to have hard conversations. And also how to recognize um, sort of the, some of the, the thinking traps and also the, the, what would you call them, bait traps that sort of get us sucked into some of these arguments, whether it's online or in, in uh, face-to-face interactions. So you, more like the gaslighting stuff I was writing about. So how to, how to know when there's manipulation stuff going on. So what, what, what is gaslighting? Okay. A uh, gaslighting is a series of behaviors that's used to manipulate. Uh, you see it in narcissistic personality disorder, uh, sociopathy, also known as antisocial personality disorder. You see it in people that are trying to gain control over people. So like dictators and cult leaders. And again, people that are like narcissists are trying to get the upper hand and also just plain old, you know, emotionally abusive people. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, the ways that people gaslight people is first denying their reality. Uh, They'll blatantly lie and say that I never said that, even though, you know, you're pretty sure they said it, but the more that they tell you, they never said something. Then you start questioning whether 
you've made it up. Mm -hmm. uh, they also tend to throw in positive praise every once in a while just to uh, kind of keep you off kilter so you don't think that they're bad all the time. Uh, they also tend to uh, pit people against you. So they'll tell somebody else that you're crazy. So that let's say like you're in a relationship and that person's told someone you're crazy and you go to them and you go, hey, this person's kind of crazy. I need to get out. They're like, oh, no, 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 you're the one that's crazy. Mm. Because when you call somebody crazy, it's, it's a way of dismissing them. Uh, and so that person becomes more isolated when they realize that they've been talked about to the mutual friends. Uh, it's also isolating you from your family members. So it could be that uh, you have um, a family member that the person in relationship with says, you know, I don't like them. And it's a really vague reason why, but they want you to cut off contacts because you get isolated and more dependent on them. And that's the name of the game is to become more dependent on them. And so they can gain more and more control over you. So those are some of the facets of gaslighting. And you see that across different personality types uh, and also in abusive relationships. Now, I know that your article didn't mention uh, any, any candidate or political figure by name. Um, it, it's people are interested in this topic because we do see right now that this is a tactic that describes a lot of what Donald Trump is doing right now. And I actually wrote the article with not political stuff in mind, uh, but that's been a large response uh, from the comments on Psychology Day has been from political point of view and actually from both sides of the aisle. Um, I don't know if manipulation is, uh, uh, you know, any one party has the, the corner on manipulation. <laughs> uh, I think that that happens with both. Uh, so I'll just say that, that I think that uh, people are becoming more aware of manipulative behavior, no matter what side it's on, mm -hmm. which I think it's good that we're becoming more and more aware of, of who we've elected, regardless of the party, if we're kind of being told something that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's made people more politically active and also more aware of their own relationships too. And when, when they're being gaslighted. So mm -hmm. uh, pretty interesting. And I'll just add the reason why it's called gaslighting is there's a movie called Gaslight from 1944. And there's a man that tries to drive his wife kind of insane basically by uh, one of the things he does is he changes the, um, dimming of the gas lights in their home and then he denies he did it so that's where the term comes from if people are wondering because oh, it is kind of an odd i, I was wondering that actually so yeah that's that's why gasoline is called that so uh but again you know that happens and again both parties can be you know can have manipulation tactics and especially in campaigning and so again i didn't write particularly for that but it's interesting how it got picked up as uh as a kind of a political piece and, wow. and one of the things that I'm seeing too in in, uh, in my coaching groups and in and, uh, and my ADHD rewired community is that people are being really sort of impacted by this, you know, because I, I do want to make this conversation relevant for for you know, the listeners of the show, right? So some of the things that I that I see uh, happening is that because this is, you know, for better or worse, a very stimulating uh, thing that's going on, we know that those of us with ADHD are attracted to things that are stimulating. It sort of locks our brain in, into it. And so one of the things that I see is that people are having a hard time sort of disengaging from it. And it, it, as I sort of uh, shared at the very top of the interview, um, that it's having a negative impact on them. So what are some of the things that um, you would suggest to, to people who are really sort of getting completely enthralled. And I talked to people where they, they are talking about how they haven't been able to really function since the inauguration. Right. And I think that there's a hyper-focusing piece of ADHD where you can uh, ruminate on something almost to the point of obsessing with it, especially if it has to do with change. Because with ADHD, we tend not to do well with change. And then if it's change that someone doesn't agree with, I think then it's you know, even more pronounced. Oh, that's a good point. Um, yeah. I, yeah. So I think that the first step is, like you mentioned, practicing good self-care. Mm -hmm. um, I've had quite a few people come into my office uh, noticing that they're having uh, increased issues with insomnia. Uh, not eating as well or eating too much, uh, sometimes sleeping too much and, instead of insomnia, uh, just difficulty keeping track of their daily activities. I'm not connecting with their family as much even. Uh, so I think it's really important to practice good self-care. And that means, you know, stepping away from the electronics. Uh, I think that uh, when you go on Facebook and on Twitter and, you know, that's healthy for for communication in ways, but also I'm starting to run into people that are, are having issues with their family members because they're at the dining room table, you know, texting and, and tweeting and Facebooking, uh, and that's causing a lot of issues. So I think it's really important first to, to have, you know, set limits on when you're going to shut off electronics. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but 
when you use electronics, whether it's a phone, laptop, tablet, two hours before bed, you're inhibiting the release of melatonin in your brain. Mm -hmm. And melatonin is a hormone that gets you ready to go to sleep. And people with ADHD already have inhibited melatonin release. So you're basically inhibiting the ability to sleep even more. So I recommend that people shut off electronics at least an hour before bed. Um, books, uh, instead of reading your, your phone or your iPad, also non-backlit devices like the uh, Kindle, uh, was it Kindle Paperwhite? Yeah, yeah. Those are found to not inhibit melatonin release. So there are ways you can still kind of read without getting your brain chemicals going uh, because the wavelength of light and backlit devices is the same wavelength you see in seasonal affective disorder light boxes. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the wavelength of, of sunlight. So your brain thinks it's time to party. So really important that you shut those off, especially before bed. I mean, have the same sleep and wake time. That's important too. Instead of staying up, you know, two, three in the morning, going surfing on your phone. Uh, also, uh, if it's a real problem, you can get your phone uh, carrier to shut off your data service between certain hours. That's, I think there's a monthly fee for that, a small fee. Do you know what carriers do that? I know that T-Mobile does it. I'm pretty sure the other ones do it too. Oh. I think T-Mobile, it was $5. That price may have changed. I'll add that uh, caveat. But, uh, but, and you can, this also works for shutting off your kids' phones too. So $5 or even $10 to outsource willpower? Sign me up. Right. And there are also apps like uh, there's Leech Block that you can add onto your browser uh, and leech like a blood sucking leech. And the idea behind is the internet sucks time like a leech sucks blood. So you can add that on your browser and tell it, I don't want to go to, uh, I don't know, lolcats.com Monday through Friday, nine to five, if you're getting in trouble at work for Is know, that a real internet. website? That LOL Cats actually is, yeah. Is it bookmarked yeah. on, your, on your browser? I thought it was a made up site. I just used it as an example, but then I found out LOL Cats is very real. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, if you use a blocker like that, what happens is when you go to the LOL cats, you'll see a big circle with a slash through with a leech saying this site's been blocked by leech block. And it's interesting how many people have told me that they don't recollect clicking on a link. They don't recollect typing something in your address bar, going to their favorites. That's how far your brain checks out when you're online, you have ADHD. Yeah. You know, as Barkley said, electronics are cocaine for the ADHD brain. You know, it's... it's it's amazing how many times, like, um, I'll be in, in my office with a client, just to, and, I, and I'm going to check something on my like right, my calendar on my phone, right? And I open up Facebook. I'm like, I did not just mean to do mm -hmm. that. I mean, and, and then I'll close it, and then I'll do it again. It's like, well, it's, oh my. it's addictive, and yes. and also uh, shutting off notifications helps. So not have your phone buzz you every time you get an email. You know, the phone's there for your convenience, yes. not you there for it. So yes. Uh, yes. shut off your Facebook notifications, shut off your Twitter notifications, because that stuff will be waiting for you uh, when you need to access it. So and also just block off in your calendar even uh, times to check your email. Otherwise, you can be checking it all the time, and you're not taking in the environment around you. You know, when we think about some of the, the uh, sort of the fundamentals of, of ADHD management, it's, you know, writing things down. Like, just mm -hmm. assume you're going to forget it, so you have to write it down. Um, right. Having, you know, clocks and timers, you know, in, in your environment. I think that in, in that list should be turn your notifications off. Like, yes. I think that is such like, and I don't think a lot of people are talking about that one as much. And it's like, we, we, I mean, I can literally get distracted by like a speck of dust that catches a light in a certain way. Mm -hmm. now. I mean, it's, right. it's, it's almost comical when it happens during like a, a, a coaching or therapy session where like, I'll either be a mid sentence or my, my client and I'll just like my, my attention will just be turned to literally a speck of dust. Not even, not even an analogy, like an actual Speck of dust, which I guess means I probably need to dust more in my office. Anyways, so I'll, I'll make you feel better by saying that dust is just present in the environment. So I'm asthmatic, so I'm 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 a hip to the dust issue. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. so it doesn't mean that you're not clean. I just want to make you feel better, Eric. Thank so you. your self esteem isn't affected. Thank you. I, I, I do need to dust though. Now, as far as watching dust while your clients are talking, that's another issue that we can talk about separately from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. it, it is a, it's a nice thing to be able to be fully open and out as having ADHD with all the clients that I work isn't with. Isn't it? It's, it's great. Yeah. So and I think it helps too because you know people realize that you've walked a walk. So I think that that really helps. You know, so far we're talking about sort of the self-care piece, right? So the, mm -hmm. the making sure we're sleeping. Um and I don't think we mentioned exercise, but like definitely, definitely exercise. Um if you want to get a some good cardio exercise, read or read something related to some of these issues or listen to something related to some of these issues while you're exercising. 
Right. Listening to podcasts while you're exercising is great. Mm -hmm. Or I tell people, too, if you're walking around the block with your kids, that counts as exercise. Leave your iPad, iPhone at home and just walk around the block and communicate with your kids. So important to have that face to face contact uh, with your spouse or partner, too, because uh, we're missing a lot of that when we're on our phones. Yeah. Um, if, if you're walking on your own, you know, I've seen a lot of people do Pokemon Go where they get points and earn little coins for or little eggs and stuff for catching Pokemon for how far they walk. Are you playing Pokemon Go? I have I have dabbled in it. Yes, I can identify the first generation of Pokemon, which scares me, and also <laughs> also helps a lot by working with clients with little ones. You know, because so. of my my history with when I first downloaded Minecraft, and it was for you know, it, this is for research purposes, right? Because all my clients were, were playing it, and I was like, okay, I, I got to see what this game is all about so I can relate to them. That was one of the deepest darkest holes of hyper focus i think i've went into since like college <laughs> yeah oh I, have, my I haven't i haven't done minecraft yet i'm probably not touching I, it I, I really wouldn't it's so i'm, I'm glad to say right now because listeners uh know that I've, I've struggled with some of the video game sort of addiction stuff where it really is mm -hmm. an addiction where it's like i don't want to be doing this and i'm not only do i do it then for what i want it to be 15 minutes it turns into two hours and i'm just like right. like it's so frustrating you know right but so I'm, right now, I am not playing any games, and it feels great. I feel well, happier you know, not playing games. Well, what does help with exercise, too, is getting an app where it gives you points for doing exercise. You know, tap into that positive reinforcement thing that works so well for ADHD. Uh, Fitocracy, it's spelled like democracy, except with F-I-T in the front. Yeah. Free app that gives you points, even gives you points for taking the stairs into the elevator, and you rise up through levels based on how many points you're earning. Oh, cool. And they also have, uh, they have challenges, like, you know, uh, bike for two miles and then walk for half a mile. They'll give you extra points. And it, we really like that stuff where ADHD, again, a little badge on the screen, rise up through levels and again that's helped a lot of people yeah absolutely i know uh, i use a, an app called uh, insight timer for meditation and mm -hmm. i love i love when, that's a good one when, too when i get a, a pop a thing that says after i've meditated you've just meditated for this many days like, Yay. I'm like yeah it gives you a little dopamine boost you know dopamine's low in adhd so when you get the little boost and you also get that from when your phone dings and rings too mm -hmm. so that's kind of you have to cut off your source of uh, dopamine boost sometimes yes so Okay, so um, obviously the issues of self-care are super important, but how do we address some of these issues sort of head on when we want to be engaged in it? Because what we're not saying is just don't engage in it and sort of bury your head in the sand. Like that's not helpful either. You can engage in a healthy way. I think right. when you look at people that have made great social change, I think it's important for people with ADHD to read about people who made great social change because they did still take time to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a myth that in order to be uh, effective that you have to, you know, go 24 hours a day. Uh, but again, take a look at people that, you know, there's people rested still when they were doing uh, social change. Um, so yeah, the, the point is, is that you can still be active, but you have to take care of yourself in order to be the most beneficial person you can be. And if you're a parent, you know, it's like on the airplane, they tell you to put your oxygen mask on before your kids, right? right? You, you got to take care of yourself to be the best parent you can be. And if you have kids with special needs, you know, that takes even more level of energy. So it's really important to, uh, to again, you know, really take a hard look at, you know, are you taking care of yourself? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating well? Are you being around positive people? The people that you're around, it turns out their attitude is contagious. There have been several studies about that. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you surround yourself with people to lift you up uh, rather than bring you down. So I think that's really important. I'm not talking about like uh, if somebody's depressed that you don't communicate with them. It's more like if somebody says to you, oh, well, you're you're ridiculous for thinking that or da, da, da. I mean, it's just step away from that mm -hmm. and be around people that, again, like uh, they may disagree with you, but they're also encouraging of you exploring your own ideas. Mm -hmm. I think those are the people that you really need to focus on. So take a look around people around you that when you're around them, you feel good and take a look at the people that emotionally drain you. So, I, you know, for, for I'm going to use myself again. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I am someone who, while has strong sort of uh, opinions and ideas about things, I am also someone who is willing to say when I'm wrong. Right. And I, I, and I want to hear other perspectives. And that's one of the things I'm really deeply interested in right now is, so, you know, there's many people that I know and have relationships with who politically we have, we really disagree. Right. And so I, and I look at some of these people and they're good people, right? It's like, how, what is the backstory behind like 
my sort of upbringing and how my values sort of are what they are versus their values and how they are what they are. Because I see, I don't mm -hmm. like, you know, I think it's easy to to, to paint this this um, broad stroke of anyone who supports Trump must be a racist, and it's not true. Like it's it's not right. No, no. Then so and and as I say that, I'm like, well, but if you don't speak against some of the things that that he's saying, doesn't that mean you are? Well, sort keep in mind that not everyone knows how to do that. Now you have an advanced degree in social work, right? Yes. But keep in mind that not everybody knows which route to take with that mm -hmm. if they do want to protest something or do want to speak out. Um, and for a lot of people, this is the first time that they become politically active. So um, keep that in mind that, that you know, you're kind of a different level of you've been taught in classes how to advocate, right? So it's really important to, you know, at some point, you know, let people know how to advocate mm -hmm. for others uh, because it's not an innate skill. You know, it's something that we learn. Does it really, does it need to be taught, Stephanie, that um, calling someone an idiot or a snowflake or... Now, uh, I'm, not ta I'm not talking about ad hominem attacks. That's where you... But, but I, I see what, I, so what I'm talking though. about. Oh, you got to talk yourself down. Take a deep breath, Eric. Take a deep breath. Okay. So what I'm talking about is that when, let's say, whoever you voted for, whether Republican, Democrat, whatever... Sometimes people are kind of concerned of how do you go about expressing your ideas about it? And I'm not, again, ad hominem attacks, that's a whole other story that we can talk about. But keep in mind that not everybody knows how to advocate or, or how to speak out, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people feel like they're not going to be heard if they speak out. So keep that in mind. And, and also keep in mind, too, to be understood, you have to understand. Yes. Yeah. So figure out yeah. where the person is coming from. Um, rarely is anything personal. Whoever somebody voted for, whether it was Clinton or if it was for Trump, that had no personal reflection on you mm -hmm. and maybe against what you thought of or what your beliefs are. But again, you know, we the great thing about the U.S. is that we're allowed to vote for whoever we want to. Mm -hmm. So take this as an opportunity to get an idea of what's going on. Um, there are a lot of disenfranchised people in the U.S. Yeah. and. And we really need to look at why that happens and how we can remedy that. And part of that, again, is, is seeing where other people are coming from. Now, again, ad hominem attacks where you're calling names, that's a whole other level where you, where you disengage because that's not productive. Uh, but I'm just talking about general, you know, trying to get opinions and ideas across. It can be really difficult for some people. Well, it's, it's even, you know, I, it's even, I think, sometimes difficult for, for myself. I, I posted on my... Uh, uh, Facebook page, um, my personal uh, page the other day, um, there was a, a House Bill 899, which was it's a, a very simple one or two sentence bill that just called for the abolishment of the Department of Education. Right. Right. So I look at and, that. And Environmental Protection Agency, too, I believe. It's both. So that's where, uh, like, there's an app called Countable. Mm -hmm. And that you can uh, give for free and you put in your zip code and it tells you who your representatives are. So I think this is interesting. A lot of people are finding out now who the representatives are mm -hmm. uh, because those are the people that they work for us. So uh, that app will tell you, you know, what areas you're most interested in, whether it's education, whether it's labor, and they'll give you an update on what bills are being proposed, what's passed, how your representatives voted. And I think it's really important to see stuff like that because I think, earlier, um, people weren't really kind of noticing that stuff. So uh, again, uh, there are apps that will tell you how they voted. Uh, and then get in touch with your with your representatives. Contact them if you have a, a particular feeling about a bill. So or... I want to dive into that, um, mm -hmm. um, about contacting them. I'm going to make a note here so we come back to uh, to that. But what I wanted to say, so I put, I, I um, so I saw this, uh, this bill and my, uh, my sort of, uh, the how I added it to my personal page was I said like, like um, this is just insane and, and immoral. Right. And so that was sort of my, my like think about like abolishing edu like the department of education. That just seems like crazy to me. Then I was taken to task a little bit on, on my comments there. And I, I, for like, I, I got a little defensive uh, there, but then I was, um, you know, then I was reflecting. It's like, well, who one of the, the, the um, people that was taking me to task um, had Says something about like, well, you know, this, uh, you know, this seventy billion dollars Department of Education. Like, what are they actually doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I need to know what the issues are a little bit even deeper. But like, so part of me thinks that as like when we think about the history of education, right? It wasn't that long ago that if a student had 
disabilities that these that the, te- the school didn't know how to respond to, they didn't have to educate that student. Like without the Department of Education, that wouldn't like schools would not be required to do that if it was. Well, okay, so let's back up because that's there are federal laws about edu- uh, exceptional ed that are actually that still stay on the books. Mm-hmm. So and I'm and so that. I, I think that's maybe maybe some maybe people said comments about that. I didn't see where you where you wrote that because you know, we're personal Facebook friends. But the exceptional ed laws still stand for now, and that's a separate. My understanding is that's a separate thing from the Department of Education. I'm not saying I I when I'm doing something professionally like this, I don't get into my political views. I do that personal level. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that the the exceptional ed laws still stand. Okay, and I think th- these sort of specific issues, um, because we know that as as if you're an adult with ADHD and you have a child, that there's a good chance that uh, um, the the uh, the tree that you have grown has has bared the fruits of ADHD as well. If you follow that analogy, your child's the fruit. Just make sure you follow <laughs> that. Um, so this impacts our kids. Right. That doesn't I mean that's that's where my fear is. So one of the people's response to my 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 thread was, well, what what's your fear? And then my response and in hindsight, like I mean, that was a little sort of passive aggressive. My response to this person was, well, do you have kids? Well, I, I think that it's great that you're identifying that you're being passive aggressive, because I think that's something that we need to look at, too, is when we're responding to people that being passive aggressive kind of shuts down the other person's response. And we may think the other person just was way off the mark with their, with their view. Mm -hmm. But when you're passive aggressive, it kind of shuts down the Avenue communication and that's an opportunity for education. Right. Right. And, and when I was reflecting on it, I was like, okay, so if I'm going to put myself out there and, and uh, make statements of personal political views, I have to be, you know, on my page. My first thought was like, how dare he come on my personal page and state his opinion, which is different than mine. I was like, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> so, right. I, so I was recognizing that I was more in, in a defensive emotional spot there. And so right. I've, been, I've been, and so I haven't responded to, to, I've been sort of giving it sort of time, um, which mm-hmm. I think is so important, whether it's online or offline, if you're feeling emotional, just hit the pause button, just don't respond. Right. There's nothing that says you have to respond. And if, and if you have control of your Facebook page, so I mean, anything that goes online stays there forever, even if it's deleted, but you can always delete your post. You can delete comments. I mean, it's, I was going to, but then I'm like, you know what? No, like, I want, I want the part of what I want to be able to, to do and to be able to model is how to engage with people who you disagree with to, as you said, right to get a better understanding so we can all get a better understanding of, of each other. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, I mean, as you said, I'm, I'm trained as a social worker, so I, I do have some training in this, but it's, it's hard. It's really hard. So if it's hard for me, you know, so what do you think as a community um, or people who want to get more engaged and can also identify their sort of, oh, that they're getting emotionally involved mm-hmm. in this? What do you think that, that, what do you think we can do? Well, on activity level, I think it's important to get involved with professional organizations and also advocacy organizations like CHAD. So that's chadd.org. That's a big national ADHD uh, group. And they have a professional advisory board. They have a policy committee. So that's where a lot of change happens. Uh, uh, the, again, that countable app that tells you who's voting for what, so you can contact your legislators. Um, I think that's that. Those are two of the main pieces: is get involved with people are in this, that have the same feelings as you and are, are uh, using appropriate means to discuss or protest. And then also, you know, again, you know, t- take a look at, at what your body's reaction is. How do you know when you're getting too keyed up about something? Is it you, you, know, you can feel your heart beating in your, in your ears because you know, your heart's being so hard? Or is it that your blood pressure is going up? Or is it you start sweating? Or you just feel this overall feeling of yuck? Or you're, you feel nauseous? Really be aware of how you're feeling. Because you have ADHD, it's, it's easy to let that ball get rolling and not mm-hmm. catch it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and again, yeah, like you said, it's, an, it's, you can take time out. You don't have to answer something right now. Mm-hmm. It'll still be there if it's on the internet. So, um, and again, yeah, if you're going to ask questions to people and you're going to post political stuff, you're going to get opinions back. So, and, and yeah, and that's one of the things too, I think it's difficult for, for a lot of people is that people that they thought had certain political persuasions are actually 
feeling the other way. Uh, and I, I think, you know, part of that is, is that that's the beauty of friendships is that we have, you know, if everybody was the same, that'd be kind of boring. Um, but, and, but I'm not talking about like ad hominem attacks where you're attacking someone or attacking a particular race or culture. I mean, that's something where you have to take a look at, you know, maybe you need to parse down your, your friend list a little bit. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, there are limits. If somebody's just expressing their opinion that they don't agree with you, then that's great. You know, so let's, let's talk about it. Maybe your opinion is going to be changed. Maybe their opinion is going to be changed. But again, you know, set a limit to what you won't tolerate. And that would be any name calling, uh, any, again, discrimination of any kind of group. I think that's, that's where uh, I think a lot of people with ADHD have a strong sense of justice. And that really gets our feathers kind of ruffled mm -hmm. up. Uh, and so that's where, again, that we need to really take a look at, you know, who we're associating with. Um, and again, get active in, you know, if you feel that there's a group that's been disenfranchised um, or, um, you know, I remember we were talking about that there have been quite a few bomb threats of Jewish community centers. Um, and one was, I guess, near you. So yes. you know, that's something where the one that my, that my son, that your son goes to. Yes. And so th that's completely understandable why that why that would be a personal thing. So talking about I, being I aware, of, being so, aware of the physical feelings, goosebumps from my head mm -hmm. to my toe right now. Just 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 so you know, right. when, you, when you bring that up. Well, I got I got goosebumps too. You can't see them on the uh, thing, but uh, <laughs> that's where we know and we acknowledge that you know, as a parent, mm -hmm. that stuff's going to get you to your core. Right. So, it, gets, it gets so primal there. You know, it's mm -hmm. like. You know, and you're uh, wired for that. And the good thing yeah. is, is you know that you have that primal wiring, which is the way you should be as a parent. That should really terrify you, right? Right, right. So um, acknowledge what, you know, what stuff you're, you're willing to get into discussing and which stuff you you don't want to touch. Do you and, know what I mean? Like, And you, you mentioned, too, about getting involved in, in organizations. And you mentioned Chad. Mm -hmm. um, uh, about two weeks ago, and I know in uh, uh, the – Georgia legislation, uh, there was a, a bill on uh, that was proposed mm -hmm. to make right. to, to require people with a prescription for a stimulant medication um, to need every a, week, every was it every five days. Yeah, because they were yep. to get a new prescription. Yeah, and, sorry, and I, sorry, I interrupted you, and this is on meds. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, bills are not law. Right now, let's also keep that in mind too. That sometimes people throw bills out there to see if they'll stick. Right. And to get their name out in the press. So uh, keep that in mind. But, but what I wanted so. to mention, though, is that Chad, from what I understand, mm -hmm. um, went to uh, uh, to the Georgia uh, mm -hmm. legislation and uh, and advocated to make sure that that, was, that, the, that bill was amended to remove that part of the legislation. So right. It's, it's also like, covered opioids. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's something where Chad did um, did advocacy work. And that's where you can get involved, too, uh, even if you're not in Georgia and you, and you can still you know do an email campaign or talk to people. And uh, and again, the professional organizations and other advocacy organizations, there's National Alliance for Mental Illness. Uh, they're a big advocacy group. They do stigma busters, which is pointing out um, you know, inappropriate references to mental health uh, in, um, in different areas, whether it's online or on TV or something. So there are other ways to get involved, too, where you advocate. Uh, and again, you know, contact your legislators. Uh, you know, again, they're, they're employees of us. You guys are in my head in a lot of ways now. I find my self-talk is really different. I find myself when something isn't working out, saying like, okay, well, that's not working, so what else do you want to try? But I, I joined the group because I, I didn't have any connections around this part of my life, and I, I've always made good progress when I've been involved in something where there was like a cohort. And the time awareness thing is, is huge. I, was, I realized how much chronically I overextend myself or I overplan. I put things on my list that are like eight or nine hours of stuff and I'm like chronically disappointed. And so paying attention to that and getting more realistic about that, which I've always been afraid of, has actually led to me getting more stuff done. And the other thing is this idea of really breaking things down to more of a, a minute level around the goals as a way to actually get traction. There's the things now that I'm making progress on that I've wanted to for years that I, I actually am because it was too big and I didn't realize that that was the barrier. I thought I was trying the wrong thing or going at it the wrong way or not doing well enough, not trying hard enough, but it was that the task was too big and making it smaller and shortening the time frame makes things feel doable, which is wonderful and, and such a sense of relief. Tiny action step by tiny action step, 
I've accomplished so many more things in this group than I thought that I would. I joined the group because I don't think I've ever been able to finish things. I've gotten more done in the last 10 weeks. I've made so much more progress than I've ever been able to do. And I can see success this time. It really has helped me move even more so into my confidence. And I'm so grateful for that. Come join us for ADHD Rewired's ninth season of online group coaching and accountability. Our spring 2017 sessions are April 24th to June 30th. Go to coachingrewired.com now and schedule your registration interview. Registration is a March 27th through April 4th. But if you go now to reserve your spot and you see availability on any Tuesday or Thursday before March 24th, grab it. And if you do, mention the promo code COACHINGREWIRED100 for $100 off registration. Don't let another season pass you by. If you're ready to grow, then go to coachingrewired.com for more information and to schedule your call. That's coachingrewired.com. Do you have a question about productivity or ADHD that you'd like me to answer? Do you have a topic you want to talk to me about? Join us every second Tuesday of the month at 12.30 p.m. Central Time for an hour of live Q&A. To register, go to erictivers.com slash events. You can ask me questions live on video or enter it in the Q&A box during the event or submit your questions ahead of time. Your questions may be heard on an upcoming episode. To confirm dates and times and to register, go to erictivers.com slash events. See you there. So I'm looking at my chicken scratch notes and Earthbound contacting. So I, I love when it actually works. Um, when I write something down and we go back to it, it's, it's, it feels just like a big win. Yay. So contacting your legislators. So I want to share sort of what I did to sort of, because we know that starting can be the hardest part. So how do we sort of uh -huh. break down the walls of, well, how do I actually do that? So what right. I did is I went to us.gov and then you can uh, search your the, for the, the House of Representatives and your and uh -huh. the senators you can do it by, by zip code. Then what I did is I put in my phone, I saved it to my phone, um, each person's name, sort of their, their title, and then I... Um, um, I think I titled them all as just elected officials or Congress. Um, so when I want to contact them, I have that information there. So it, it decreased the the number of steps from, mm -hmm. oh, I want to contact my legislature. So because otherwise it's like the first step is look up how to do that or find right. out who they actually are. Um, and block in your schedule too when you're going to do that instead of doing it all day too. Yes, that, that, that's, that's a really good point too. Because um, it's, 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 because it's good for two reasons. One is telling you when to do it, but it's also telling you when not to do it, which I think mm -hmm. is probably just as important with this if you're right. finding yourself getting very, like, sort of all consumed in this. Right. And I think it's also important, too, to take a break and see what's going well, mm -hmm. uh, that people are becoming more politically active. People are talking about their political points of view than when before they, they didn't. Mm -hmm. I think there, there's a segment of the population that's being heard now that wasn't heard before. Uh, I think that it's really gotten people to take a step back and to see what their values are, I think, which is important. Um, I think it's made people more aware of, again, that some of those gaslighting techniques. And again, I'm, I'll just say that that's not isolated any political party that's used to, uh, you know, amongst both. Uh, so I, I think also it's really made us look at, you know, the constitution. What does it mean? You know, what are the different parts of it? Cause you, uh, sometimes in school people didn't learn about the constitution or didn't read it. And I've noticed people are actually reading it now, which is important. It's important for all citizens because that covers everybody, regardless of your political persuasion or not. So, um, again, that stuff like that, I think is, is really, that's, really improving mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are becoming civically active um, active in their community uh, so i think we need to take a step back too and look at what's going well because it's really easy to get wrapped up in um you know getting we can get especially with adhd you know, too much again that snowball starts rolling and then you know we forget to sleep or we forget to eat or forget you know again or just like not able to because our minds are spinning mm -hmm. around the stuff and, right and, and, and also keep in mind what you have control over and what you don't 
Talk about that. Right. So when you have ADHD, sometimes you want to be able to control stuff because things feel really chaotic. But we have to keep in mind there's things we control and things we can't. Things we can control are contacting legislators, being involved in, pl- in policy committees, policy groups, uh, being involved in professional organizations, uh, things like um, you know, having positive discourse, communication with, with friends about their political views. Uh, and the things we don't have control over is, is, you know, once someone's elected, you know, what can we do about that? Right. So, but what we can do is make sure that we go out and vote. And we usually in the U S have a, a generally low voter turnout, which, you know, needs to change because in a lot of countries you're not even allowed to vote or your vote is, you know, is not, I'm trying to think of the right word for this. The, the elections aren't legitimate. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important to remember that, you know, it's within our kind of citizen obligation, all of us, again, regardless of pol- political affiliation to vote, because that's one of the biggest ways that we can influence or make change. So, and there are elections coming up in what, 2017, 18? Not that long from now. It's, Not that long from now. Um, so again, really keep in mind again with apps and also reading up on, you know, how people voted for something and see how your, your uh, house representatives person and your uh, senators voted. You know, every state has two senators and you have a specific representative for your area. So keep in mind to look and see what, you know, who they are, Mm -hmm. what they stand for. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, you have the right to, to voice your say about that. And um, so I know that a lot of people with ADHD also struggle with anxiety. Um, and I think yeah. there's a, a specific type of anxiety that a lot of us have. And that's, I, I don't know if this is an official term, but I'll just call it phone anxiety. Um, I, I'm totally guilty of it too. Like picking up the phone when it's like, a, when you're not really sure what's going to happen. So mm-hmm. any tips on, on that? So if someone wants to contact their, their legislators. Um, you can write to them as well. You can email um, there's all sorts of different ways to contact people. You know, I, and I, I think you posted a script, I think, I don't know if it was on your business page, but it was a really nice script as to how to you know, talk to someone. And you have that printed out or on your screen and you just read, you know, and the people answering the phone, you know, keep in mind that they're just as overwhelmed as you are. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, and when you follow that script, exactly what you want to say, you know, it really decreases the anxiety. Mm-hmm. So, and also you can do role play too. I have a friend or family member, you know, do a role play of when you call and what you're going to say. And again, there are, they count, uh, the aides will count and uh, the legislative aides will count emails. They'll count phone calls. They'll count postcards. They'll count letters. And faxes. Uh, and faxes. faxes are, are, from what I've heard recently, have become very effective as mm-hmm. means because it's, it puts something tangible in that person's hands. Right. And there are, there are uh, services that you can do online faxes like S fax. So mm-hmm. S is a Sam fax is one of them. Um, oh, and I don't get paid or endorsed by any of the things I've been mentioning today. I just want to throw that out there. Um, so you can fax right from your computer. So yeah. uh, you don't have to have, you know, a quote unquote fax machine. <laughs> so uh, and also check to see if your elected officials are on Facebook. I know that some of mine are mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and they'll post stuff on, on their Facebook page and that gives me an opportunity to respond to, to what they're saying. Um, yeah. And it's a great way to meet people too. Mm-hmm. So we had a, an issue with my city uh, that I got involved with the uh, action group there. And, you know, I met some really great people that otherwise I don't know I would have met in my city. So uh, really important again, that we look at, you know, how can we go out there and make a difference? And sometimes that's just by sheer numbers of people too. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's a great way, especially if you have ADHD, you know, you may have comorbid social anxiety and going out and doing something feels kind of funny and odd and scary. But if you have a common goal, it's much easier to go and meet people. Yeah, it's um, I, I just hope that this uh, the, the civic engagement continues because um, I think of that as I think it's actually getting stronger. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it, that part feels good. Um, mm-hmm. it's cause we, we do need to be an informed, uh, uh, citizen. I think that's, that, that's just so important. Um, you mentioned about like we, that, um, a lot of people are either going back to, or looking at the constitution for the first time. There is mm-hmm. a, a podcast that I've listened to a few episodes of called uh, civics 101. Um, and it's just, it's, it's helping people sort of like, here's how government works. It's a real, mm-hmm. like, it's almost like schoolhouse rocks. Mm-hmm. Right. You should go back and watch schoolhouse rocks. That. That'd be good. <laughs> we, we they've, should, got, we, they've actually got School House Rock has a whole thing on the bills and how they make bills. Yeah. yeah is, how, uh, how a bill becomes I, a law. I forget what it's, what it's called. What is it called? 
how, how ability comes a law? Yeah, that's really, it's, it's accurate. So yeah. Uh, yeah and, it's, um, and also do your fact checking too. If you see something that sounds like one not the, quite right. One of the things that I start, that I started doing, cause I, I got totally called out on, on this once. And I was like, Oh man, I, I, so any, any article that you see that like makes your blood boil, go to Google and look it up. Right. right. Uh, Cause I, I share something and then someone's like, no, that's actually not, not accurate. I'm like, Come right. On. So I, I'm like, Oh man, that's embarrassing. Right. And right. one of the face groups, uh, Facebook groups I'm in the, the person, the admin has made a list of legitimate news sources and mm-hmm. ones that are not legitimate, uh, the kind of, uh, that have, that have been basically busted for making up stories. Uh, and that's been really helpful that you can look at this list. So if there's a list available online, of legitimate news sources, I'm sure there is. Uh, you know, take a look at that. I was listening to a um, a podcast uh, yesterday. Um, it's that what is it? Pod Save America. It's with uh, this um, Obama speechwriters. It's a great, mm-hmm. great podcast. And uh, they're interviewing um, Ann Coulter uh, in the latest episode. And she was making this, this suggestion because this is on both sides that that mm-hmm. both sides are are uh, sharing uh, stuff that's not legitimate. That mm-hmm. me, that it would be good if we had sort of a cross, uh, a, almost like if we look at our, our scholarly journals as peer reviewed, having a mm-hmm. process and then similar to like Better Homes and Gardens where they have that like seal of approval, right? Where you can sort of identify uh, with a certain sort of seal or identification that this is a legitimate article. Well, we actually do that in legitimate news organizations. So my undergrad degrees in, in telecom and TV news. I always, every time I say uh, that, I always forget that. Yeah, so uh, there is a, a vetting process you go through the news. You do have to run it past an editor mm-hmm. uh, in legitimate news organizations. Now, um, that doesn't always mean it's the slant that you agree with. Uh, but overall, I, the press, you know, that's our First Amendment right. Uh, and overall, the press is fair. Mm-hmm. And again, I again, for my telecom background, I'll, I have an inherent bias, I guess. But there is a vetting process that you undergo uh, in legitimate news organizations before you can put something online what or is- in print. But especially right now, as the, the current administration is trying to, to uh, make you yeah. question, like, what's legitimate and what's not, right? Like, how, I, how does the typical consumer? I think, you know, I think we really look at our hunch. And if it, if it feels like it's a little too out there, then we need to check. When uh, the headline says all or nothing, or it, it uh, says yes or no in it, you know, I, I think we need to look at it because very rarely are there absolutes. Right. And just take a look at, you know, we're both sides this issue interviewed. Uh, I think that's an important thing to look at too. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, there is a vetting process in place, but yeah, we also have to be kind of savvy consumers. Um, and uh, oh, go ahead. Um, I was just thinking, do you think that, that we will be able to, to get back to a point where civic discourse in a civilized way like, can happen again? Like, I'm, I'm concerned about that. I don't, I don't think it's gone away. I think it's there. I think we, I think that um, there's stuff being talked about that wasn't talked about before. Uh, and I think that's actually increased people's communication. Like I'm, I'm on a political board of political affiliations from all over the place. And I've noticed that people are engaging in really civil discourse. Uh, and I think that's really important. So I think we have to look at the fact we're actually moving forward in that direction. Uh, there are always going to be people that will, again, do ad hominem attacks where they're naming people, calling people names. And there's always going to be some level of bias, you know, uh, and racism and culturism. So, uh, but I think we really need to look at the fact that overall we're, we're doing pretty good at banding together. Um, and you know, our common goal is protection of ourselves, protection of our kids, right. protection right. of our environment. I think, mm-hmm. um, uh, from whatever political side, I rarely run into somebody from either political side that is a, is against the environment. So I think we have to look at, again, our common threads. And if, and if your point is to educate people, then, you know, you need to, again, meet people where they're at, you know, so. And I am sure if we were to just create a, a sort of a, a list of side-by-side stuff, I uh, I can almost guarantee that that no matter what side of the the, the ticket you vote, we have way more in common than we do different. Like, I, I just, I, I mm-hmm. we're not all that different from each other. And, and keep in mind, everybody was raised differently. Everybody was raised differently. And that's the beauty of the U.S. is that we have people from all different backgrounds. Yeah. And 
if you grew up like, like I did an upper middle class background, you take a lot of, you know, I, I try not to, but it's really easy to take some of the things for granted. So uh, we need to take a look at, um, you know, why people are disenfranchised. You know, w what segment of the U.S. was not being addressed? And I think that's an important thing. And a lot of people are mad. We have to look at why are they mad, you know? Sure. And, and I think that's something that we really need to take a deep look at. Right. So uh, I, I think overall, I think we're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. I know it may not feel like it sometimes, but I, I feel like people uh, on my Facebook page are, are talking about stuff and on Twitter that they never would have talked about with each other. Um, I got into kind of a little debate with somebody on, on uh, Twitter and, you know, I, I said to him, well, you know, thanks for addressing your points. That's something I really want to consider. You know, and, and that sometimes people just want to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. They don't always do it in the most eloquent way. And again, I'm not talking about name calling and stuff. I'm talking about just sometimes people say stuff and it's not in a smooth way, mm -hmm. but we need to hear what they're trying to say. And then if you don't know, ask, say, you know, what, I'm, what, are, I get a little confused. Tell me a little bit more about what you're trying to say to me. It would be good if there was a Google translator tool that can like decode like emotionally laden text and just like decode mm -hmm. it. So it's just like, What's the person actually trying to right. say? And again, if you have someone that that's, makes an ad hominem attack, um, and we've talked about the origin of Snowflake, his anti-Semitic uh, background to it, yes, uh, I don't think which a lot of people aren't aware that. of. Right. Um, and I think that's something that we need to let people know about too, uh, that that has a lot of loaded meaning. Well, um, explain what it means. So that relates to Holocaust, and I'm not Jewish, but you are, so I'm going to let you take over. Um, <laughs> I'm like Jewish Presbyterian, which doesn't make sense, but we make we make uh, beef brisket on Rosh Hashanah, so you know I don't know. But <laughs> well, <laughs> so it's, and it's, we know Yiddish, <laughs> which you know I don't know, but uh, so I'm going to let you take over because it's it's a comment about this was it the cinder flakes that were coming from the the ashes from the, the crematoriums, crematorium, right, or the right, right. The it, ovens. It looked like yeah. snow. Right? Yeah. So that's that's. That the term snowflake was as it was a derogatory term that was basically used like hey, you're you're going to become a snowflake like you're yeah. going to be burned in the crematorium, like, right? And it, and I I think the Gestapo would would use that as to taunt prisoners, right? Is that I don't know I don't know that part. Um, I I think that but I think the where the term snowflake came from now is oh individual snowflake, but we got to understand that that has a historical meaning to it. Right, right. That's pretty heavy. Think, yeah, I don't think a lot of people recognize that. Yeah, and I think that's important to let people know, and to, and to not forget, and you know, always remember those parts of history where we've, uh, you know, aligned against a group. Uh, we just had the 75th anniversary of the Japanese internment in World War II. Uh, that's that's something else that's uh, you know, we need to look at. That that um, you know, we as a history of as a people, you know, we've had some pretty heavy discrimination going on. And it's definitely and, when I first learned about that in high school, um, I think mm -hmm. that was the the first time that really sparked my sort of like uh, sort of advocacy sort of part of myself. Because um, mm -hmm. I, you know, from as as someone who was raised Jewish, like from a very young age, like I learned about the Holocaust, right? And which mm -hmm. is this horrific thing that wasn't that long ago, right? Right. Um, and when I first learned about that, that the U.S. had had uh, inter that, that put Japanese Americans in internment camps during this, I'm like, why am I just learning about this? Like, I was outraged by it. And, and here's something that blows people's minds, too. That was done by a Democratic president. That was done by uh, FDR. Hmm. So keep in mind that if you're Democrat, things have not always been on the up and up. And also, if you're Republican, things have always been on the up and up. But the the old Democratic Party is more now what the Republican Party. True, is. true, true. But we keep in happen. mind, there's a fine line. There's a very fine line. Yeah. And when you get to, when you get to be absolute about your views, you kind of meet around the corner. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I think we we in all of our discussions, we I think it's healthy to take a position of okay there might be something that I don't understand here. Mm -hmm. And I think if we all come together with that mindset, I think we have a lot that we can learn from each other. But this is not oh, yeah. an easy thing for us to do as, as uh, a community and as a nation. Um, but I think this is one of our most important and I think probably defining struggles that we're going to have as a, a generation. 
Yeah, and and I think, again, we have the opportunity to make great change and to band together. And again, yeah, uh, talk about things that we really haven't talked about in a while Um, and and give a voice to people that may not have felt like they were heard before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a a real opportunity for growth. So I think when we look at it that way, um, and it's an opportunity for us to go outside our comfort zone by being politically active whatever, again, whatever side you're mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I, I kind of look from the point of what's, what's going well with this and what do we have control over? And that may be even that you write it down. You may even need to write down, what do I have control over? What do I not have control over? Mm-hmm. And how do I change the things that I don't have control that I, that I do have control over? You know, what's, the, what's the AA thing is, is like a uh, discerning prayer. Yeah. Um, uh, accept, something, what, something. accept what you cannot change. Um, uh, something about what, can change and the wisdom to and the wisdom know, know the difference oh. right can we get partial credit oh, for that answer and we had two journaling helps too if you're feeling really irate about something you need to get on with your day just write it out record you know, I, it I, dictate and, it and, and listeners and viewers know that, that i am not a writer like writing is hard for me and i did that uh, a, a week or two ago um because i was just like i i knew i had work to do and i just either wash mm-hmm. or hurt something and i was i could just feel the blood boiling and right it's like i gotta get this out and it felt so much better like mm-hmm. really, yeah you're really externalizing does. stuff your, your brain thanks you for doing that yes. and once you step back and look at something you've written you can say oh this is how i can take action about that or is this something that i need to you know accept that doesn't mean accepting doesn't mean that you're happy about it yeah absolutely but understanding there's something some things you don't have control over so, but overall, I'm really proud of how we've done as a people, you know, on both sides of the issues uh, with people talking to each other. Um, and I think, you know, social media has really helped with that. Mm-hmm. And again, there's always going to be a small percentage of people that behave inappropriately, but let's focus on the people that have really tried to cross party lines and talk about stuff. And that's pretty, it's pretty miraculous, actually, how, how it's kind of come together in the last, just last month or mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. Um and I just want to put out there for for uh, viewers who might be watching on YouTube or listeners on the, the podcast. You know, if you're you're listening to this and you uh, um, and your political views are different than mine, and and you are still listening, first of all, thank you. Um, you know that that I think speaks to to your open mindedness. I would I would love to hear your sort of feedback based on what the message that I'm trying to in the, the conversation I'm trying to sort of initiate here because I know that this is. A little risky for for me to do this because I'm also a, you know I'm I'm a business owner, but I'm also a a you know I believe in that we need to have this conversation. I think it's so important and as a member of a community who that that has disabilities and who have been marginalized. I think this is an important conversation that we have. So um, whether you're you agree with me or you disagree, I just love to hear sort of your thoughts uh, um, about this because I really do want to to um, lay a foundation to have a civilized conversation where uh, um, we can be mindful and aware of sort of our own personal emotional um, positioning, but then trying to really hear and, and hear each other out. So if, if, you're, if you think that, that Donald Trump is the greatest president ever and you think that I'm just a fool for thinking what I do, like, okay like help me understand why because i do i really really do want to understand but people why. think that that's okay yeah yeah that's the thing that's okay and it, and it's okay if uh people feel like they align with you because of of your political views i think it's okay and i'm sorry for interrupting you but i just want to just reiterate that if people disagree with you and i know with adhd sometimes we take things personally but again you know we don't know where people come from Mm -hmm. and we don't know what their backgrounds been. We don't know how they've gotten to the point where they vote who for whoever they vote for. So, um, and I think you brought up a good point where someone said about the department of education, well, what exactly do they do? Well, here's their opportunity to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And we probably could all use an education on what it does. Right. It gets, it's a, it's a valid question. Right. I mean, now I, it's amazing to me the amount of people that can name who's the head of different divisions of the government that before we're like, well, we know the president, the vice president, maybe our senators, but you know, the, I mean, I have people that will, are able to name like every you know, nominee for whatever, which is pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I mean, but, when, uh, when I saw it, uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I think also there's a, there's a fine line between, you know, when, when you do run your own business, how do you, 
be true to your beliefs and also try to be as neutral as possible. Right. Cause they, and cause I think that gets tricky too. Cause I don't think this is politics as usual anymore. Like this is why I think that so many more people are now talking about politics where mm -hmm. in the past it would be considered like, you don't, you know, it's like sex, politics, and religion. Don't, don't talk about those things in polite company. But I think that, that we're recognizing that it's not even so much the, the person, but it's the, it's the, the policies that are having such a, a, large impact the potential to have such a large impact on just so that where this country is is going um i did have a uh there's a, there's a twitter feed that i follow um called shower thoughts which i just love it's like this is random like thoughts and so what, one of my recent shower thoughts was well what if all the stuff that trump is doing actually ends up like helping a lot of stuff is that then gonna like make like what is that gonna do for sort of uh civil discourse like, is it going to then say that that's okay? I don't know. That's a random shower thought. I don't know. It's, uh, I, I think we're in a, I think as in the U S as a whole, I think we're going through, uh, kind of like a, you know, like when you're a teenager, you kind of do this like individuation, like growing to, uh, from your parents and mm -hmm. stuff. I think there are people that are becoming, um, more, they're stretching their political muscle more. And I think with that comes some growing pains. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think it's just, that's just part of how things go. Cause again, people are going outside their comfort zones. So are you, I think you're rubbing on your microphone. Oh, I'm, I'm doing what? Rubbing on your microphone. You're, I'm rubbing it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's my luxurious hair getting wrapped up in the microphone. That's Sorry, YouTubers. I'm probably, I'm, up, I'm probably not going to edit this part for the, for YouTube, but, um, uh, podcasters, podcasters won't hear it. Now you can see, I can, I can tie my hair up without using a hair tie there. That's my, that's my hidden skill. <laughs> you know, is it better now? So, Stephanie, I don't know if you know this about me, but um, when I was in college, I used to have you, you can put your hair up without a hair tie. Yes, I used to have dreadlocks, <laughs> and, I, and I would I would take two of the dreads. Like, can you can you imagine this this shiny head of mine used to be a full head of thick dreadlocks? Actually, I can totally picture that. There's a picture, and I think you need to put a picture somewhere. on your. You need to post a picture for everybody to see this. It's it's somewhere floating around the internet. Um, it was a picture of me. It's, it's a black and white picture. Uh, I was playing keyboards at a, uh, at a, at a gig. Um, I was wearing a tie dye shirt and overalls. Um, I think I might be even was smoking a cigarette, like in this picture. Like, oh, you have to show that to people. <laughs> this is part of being your authentic self is showing your picture, your dreaded, your dreadedness. And, I, and so the, the story of, of that is that I, um, so my, my mom hate, uh, if you can imagine a, my mom's kind of a stereotypic Jewish mother and she hated my dreadlocks with a passion. It, <laughs> it was like a personal affront to her. The fact that I had dreadlocks, right? Now you don't, you don't have tattoos, do you? I don't. Okay. So you saved your, you spared your mom the, my, that. Sis, my sister does. Um, <laughs> and you know, I, it's not that I wouldn't get a tattoo. It's, the, it's, it's a very permanent decision and decisions aren't necessarily my strength. I just have a feeling that wouldn't fly with your mom. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't really care. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Um, well, you did have dreads and that, so that's. I, I brought, so what it was, um, it was like two days before I was, I was coming home because I was going to have some, some, uh, I was have surgery and I was kind of freaking out about it. So I cut my dreads off like the night before I was having surgery and I came home, um, but I had a hood up and I handed her this jar and said, happy Hanukkah. She's like, what is this? And I took my head off and she was like, she was the best Hanukkah present she ever got. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a jar? You hand her a jar? A big jar. Of, jar of dreads? Yeah, and my dread, I cut them off. And You're kidding me. It so was, you need to write a blog. That's another thing people can do. Write a blog about your political views. Yeah. And your and your bring your dreads home in a jar to your mother. I think that's that's a good story. <laughs> Dreadlocks in a jar. It's the my, my new up and coming album that I'm gonna uh... <laughs> Oh yeah, that could yeah, that's a good album name. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. You can have the jar. Did you get a picture of the jar? You can put that on the album cover. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. I think my uh, when my parents moved, they refused to bring it with them. So it might yeah, I'm there. assuming they threw it out at some it, point. It was like in my childhood home, like room, like for a year. Like I opened that jar once. It was I, I can't ever take that moment back, and I wish I could. Yeah, let's not. Yeah, it let's was... not go there. <laughs> let's not go there, Eric. So we've you... talked about we've talked about a lot of disturbing things today, and a jar of dread. The, the, the line that's, in the sand. That's it. Yeah, the line's yeah. been drawn. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and i actually have to go because yes. i have a client coming yes. in so um how can people reach you 
People can reach me on my website at stephaniesarkis.com. That's uh, my last name's S is in Sam, A R K I S is in Sam. And there's a newsletter on there where I talk about things like gaslighting. There's a Psychology Today blog, Huffington Post blog. So if you just Google me, they should pop up. So now are you speaking anywhere soon? I am. I am speaking in Indiana coming up. I'm speaking and doing a whole tour in New York. Uh, so if you go to the events page on my website, you can see all the places I'm going to be. I'm going to be at Manhattan. I'm going to be in Westchester County, uh, upstate New York uh, next month. So Awesome. We'll link to your website in the show notes. Um, so you can just Thank go to erictivers.com slash whatever episode number this is. Just put that number after the slash. Stephanie, thank you so much. This is a really uh, this is a great thank conversation. You. I think that we managed to do it with hopefully not offending too many people. I think we did it a pretty even way. We, we did. We, yeah. we were both a little like we were, we were you know, approaching cautiously. but I think And, and you're pretty job. chilled out. That's good. I only had to remind you to breathe once. So, you know, that's, that's good. Well, meditation helps. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. Maybe next time we should talk about comp- uh, compensation stuff. Let's do right? it. Let's do it. Yeah. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. This has been Eric Tibbers, and I want to thank you for listening and congratulations. You made it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find additional summaries and resources for each episode, learn more about the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group, and sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content you won't get anywhere else. It's all at ADHDrewired.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tivers. You want to see interviews with content not heard on the podcast? Subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube. Don't just be a passive listener. Be an active member of the community. Submit your request to join our free and growing community on Facebook. Watch your message inbox. You will get a message either from myself or Nisha Subramanian. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends, family, and clients. If you're a member of Chad or any other ADHD support group, tell them about this show. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. And if you really love this particular episode, please hit share on your podcast player. I'm only one person and I count on you to help me spread the word and get this message out there. One of the biggest things that you really can do to support this podcast and help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Not sure where to start? You could start with Brene Brown's The Gifts of Imperfections or her six-hour recorded workshop, The Power of Vulnerability. If you've already listened to those, then you might want to move on to Daring Greatly or her most recent book, Rising Strong. This is Eric Tivers, and I want to leave you with a question. Do you stay up late to finish work so you only sleep for five hours and then the next day you have trouble focusing so you stay up late to finish work? If so, you might be in the ADHD productivity sleep cycle. Try this instead. Go to sleep, get an accountability partner to check in with about your sleep time, get more sleep, get more done. Thanks for listening. Until next time.